Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. I hope everyone is uh, doing absolutely great. Um, in the previous sessions, we had been actually seeing uh, the risk assessment. We had seen how we can actually analyze the risks. We, we, we saw uh, different steps of uh, uh, analyzing the risks. Uh, risks. We developed the PNI matrix. Uh, we also saw uh, the fishbone diagram or Ishikawa diagram, which could actually identify majority of the problems or maybe 20% of the problems, uh, which may create the 80% of the issues uh, and uh, may develop the risk uh, within uh, uh, your venture. Uh, so uh, when we talk about the risks, we usually also talk about the strategy and the decision making. Uh, now that we have actually seen that how can we actually analyze uh, uh, the risks, uh, we are going to actually see the strategy and decision making. Uh, so <clears throat> why do we uh, study the strategy and the decision making is because uh, we actually develop the strategy and we take the decisions to actually mitigate uh, the risks. So uh, if, if we want to actually develop a strategy or we want to make a decision, uh, strategizing something is actually developing a tactic to avoid the potential risk and a tactic to uh, generally gain a competitive edge in the market. So when you decide uh, a certain tactic uh, to uh, overcome uh, the rest of the problems uh, which, which you may face uh, in the market and uh, you may actually gain the competitive edge in the market. Now, according to uh, Johnson and Schultz uh, in, the, uh, uh, in this exploring uh, corporate strategy, uh, the strategy is actually the direction and scope of the organization over the long term, which achieves the advantages for the organization uh, through its configuration of resources within the challenges, challenging environment. So again, the strategy is basically uh, the direction and scope over the long period, long term, right? So uh, we can actually see this that um, when you actually have a, a vision that what you actually want to do, when you want to try that to achieve that vision, right? So you develop a certain strategy uh, which may actually benefit your organization over the long term. So it is basically, the strategy is generally uh, given as a long term rather than a short term. But, but within an organization, uh, different tiers of uh, the organization generally has a different types of strategies. Uh, for example, uh, if we actually uh, look, look at a corporate uh, organization, uh, we have a corporate office over here, right? Uh, and uh, then we have uh, this divisions, uh, certain divisions over here, right? And then we have got these functional, uh, 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 functional departments. Now these, under these divisions, uh, you have a certain functional department. This head office, at the head office, they will actually develop a corporate strategy. Now this corporate strategy actually is a long-term strategy. Right? So this is a long-term strategy. They actually develop a long-term strategy. They see that what we are going to actually achieve within next five years or seven years or 10 years or maybe beyond that. Uh, and what should be actually done and where, in which direction uh, should we be heading? Which further divisions or the departments we should be actually opening uh, to actually comply with the market requirements? Similarly, uh, one division um, that might be a finance division, that might be a marketing division, in order to comply with the corporate strategy, they actually develop a certain business strategy, right? So um, if, if they, they, at this level, uh, uh, at, the, at the division level, they are not going to actually develop uh, the business strategy. They are going to actually develop, uh, uh, sorry, uh, they're not going to develop the corporate strategy, but they're going to develop the business strategy. But at the lower level, uh, the departments and which, which are under the certain divisions, they actually develop the functional strategy. So there are different types of strategies. 
the corporate strategy at the corporate level, which is a corporate head office, right, uh, where uh, the CEOs or CTO or CCO are setting. And then there is a business strategy where the different uh, directors or maybe uh, the, the uh, managing directors or maybe these kind of people are sitting and then there's a functional uh, 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 strategies which actually comes to the further departments which is production marketing sales finance personal r d and these departments then they actually go for the functional strategy but keep this thing in mind that these functional strategies they actually comply with the business strategy which has been developed by the divisions and this business strategy is then uh, um business strategy is in compliance with the corporate strategy which is developed by the corporate office right uh, in case of now this is this is this is a perfect example of uh, uh, of a larger organization or a corporate organization but in your case when you are starting a new venture you are the corporate office you are the division and you are the functional department right so it's just basically in the very beginning it's either a one man two man or three man show, right zada se zada, uh, uh, it's it's more of a uh, you know the team which is which is composed of uh, approximately three four members or maybe two members or maybe single handed person right so this actually is basically you you have you all have to develop this r d as well personal strategy corporate strategy business strategy functional strategy so, so you you can actually think of this that how um, how much effort do you have to actually put in to actually develop a strategy it's mostly <clears throat> mostly mostly uh, when you actually develop a strategy uh, it actually depends uh, that um, uh, because you have a smaller market and the corporate organizations, they generally have a larger market. So the amount of the effort based upon the market penetration and the market competition, uh, the strategize, uh, uh, strategy and the decision making, they, it may vary uh, uh, very differently from the corporate. Right? So uh, uh, generally being an entrepreneur, being, being, being you know, uh, at, a, at a smaller level, you might have start with a very smaller market. In the beginning so we need the functional strategies and then bottom up to the corporate strategy right okay now um, when we actually talk about the uh, uh, strategy any successful strategy actually has uh, three different uh, pillars first one is the long-term simple uh, agreed upon objectives that all the stakeholders they has to have a long-term simple agreed uh, objectives, right? Uh, the second one is basically the profound understanding of competitive environment. Uh, the environment actually counts a lot. Uh, the internal and the external environment, they both actually count to uh, for any of the strategies to become effective and uh, successful. Uh, the third one is the objective appraisal resources. Uh, you need actually resources to actually complete that particular objective which you have actually defined over here. So you need to actually allocate the resources to appropriate people and appropriate appropriate teams uh, and at appropriate places so that they can actually work with those resources to uh, comply with the larger objective of the organization and implement that strategy so if you are actually having a certain objective you are providing the resources and you actually have a good internal and the external environment by internal environment we mean to say uh, uh, the internal working environment of the organization and the external environment is basically uh, <clears throat> the environment which is outside the organization maybe maybe the the, the, uh, uh, the uh, political stability might be one of uh, the external environments uh, then uh, the taxations and any other thing which is coming along with the stakeholders which uh, are uh, residing outside the environment like suppliers uh, the cost of the goods that those suppliers are actually providing uh, if they uh, they actually uh, remain uh, good, so all these three things have to be there to make any of the strategy very successful. 
So the strategic decisions are usually concerned with the whole environment in which the firm operates. Uh, it is it has to be actually and uh, now this again this environment is internal and external environment the environment within the organization and any environments which actually resides uh, outside the organization so uh, the decisions have to be made by seeing the internal and the external environment in which you know uh, uh, the um, organization is operating or the firm is operating uh, the entire resources uh, and the people that forms the company right uh, and the interface between the environment and the resources and it is very important that uh, the resources have to be allocated according to the environment uh, specifically internal environment because the resources when allocated they will be allocated to the internal members of the firms uh, which are the teams, right? So uh, you have to see the environment within the organization and allocate the resources accordingly. Uh, then uh, strategic decisions uh, is basically have major resource uh, uh, propositions for the organizations, may concern acquiring, organizing, and allocating, uh, deal with the harmonizing organizational resources, and then uh, deal with the range of organizational activities once you have allocated the resources you have to actually uh, monitor and you have to see continuously that whether the resources within the organization which have been allocated uh, to the appropriate teams um, or the relevant teams whether those resources have been or are being used appropriately or not even when you are uh, uh, coming up with your own venture, right? Uh, you have to see that whether the, uh, um, uh, the resources that you are allocating to your teams or maybe uh, to, to a certain uh, uh, maybe a subset of your project, whether those resources are being uh, are sufficient enough primarily. Secondly, uh, whether those resources are being utilized in a proper manner. Uh, whether it, the, the resources are not being mishandled or misutilized right so it is very important to see that you need to actually uh, harmonize all the resources now these resources specifically in your case in in, uh, in case of uh, the newly started venture uh, the capital is one of the major resources <clears throat> And if the capital is not being utilized uh, appropriately, or if, if you are um, trying to develop something and you uh, you have spent too much of the resources or the money on one thing, which you are still not able to develop, then I think that that one thing uh, uh, for that one thing you are uh, utilizing too much of the resources and the capital, right? So you have to think twice that whether that thing uh, has to be developed or not, right? Okay. Um, <clears throat> moving onwards, involve a change of uh, a kind, a uh, major kind, uh, since the organization uh, operates in the ever-changing environment, uh, are complex in nature, um, are at the topmost level, uh, uncertain. Or we have already talked about it uh, are different from ad, uh, administrative and operative we'll see this uh, administrative and operational decisions very soon just in coming slides uh, actually the thing is that the strategic decisions uh, that you actually are going to make are not actually going to uh, remain as it is over the period of time a lot of things depend upon uh, why it's actually uh, uh, written complex nature because you're any of the strategic decision that you actually make, uh, any of the strategies that you actually make, because they actually depend upon your internal and the external environment, specifically the external environment. Is, if the external environment of, uh, 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 of the firm, of the organization, it actually changes over the period of time, the strategy and the decision making that, that keeps on changing over the period of time as well. It's not necessary that if I've strategized something, um, if, if my strategy is to actually uh, uh, penetrate into uh, you know uh, into a certain market segment uh, over the period of time the external market uh, external market pressure may actually change my decision to 
even change my uh, 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 selected targeted segments, right? So uh, it is very important that we must keep on monitoring the uh, the external environment uh, as well as the internal environment of the firm, so that we can take the decision accordingly. And this is exactly what this complex nature uh, means. And this is exactly uh, uh, what the, uh, it means to actually um, uh, change the decision and the change the strategies over the period of time, right? Because uh, nothing. Uh, remains consistent forever it, it has to change and it should change because change is always good if you keep on changing the strategies if you keep on changing uh, uh, your your uh, goals with respect to the environmental change with respect to the change in the market you will always remain uh, in the market and you will always you might actually gain the competitive edge in the market right okay uh, this is what is the difference between the strategic operation and administrative uh, decisions uh, strategic is generally long term uh, operational is non frequently taken uh, and this is administrative which is actually taken daily so uh, what we can actually see is that uh, the three different um, sections for example uh, strategic is basically at the corporate uh, operational, maybe um, what you can say is, I'm not going to say that it's on the regional level, but yes, uh, or you may say, uh, and administrative are generally uh, at uh, the uh, functional level, right? So because it is taken daily. So uh, operational uh, uh, is basically not frequent taken and uh, the administrative is taken daily. So strategic is concerns future planning. It is a medium period based right and this is a short term based uh, then it is uh, strategic is in accordance with the organizational and the mission and the vision right uh, this is in accordance with the strategy right uh, and uh, strategic and admin decisions uh, this is basically administrative is according to the strategic and operational decisions so basically the decisions taken over here and operational depends upon the administrative as well as the strategic and over here on the operational and the strategic right uh, strategic is uh, related to the overall planning and the operation uh, operational is related to the production uh, related to the working uh, and administrative is related to the working of the uh, uh, employees uh, strategic is uh, now for example working of the employees and the production is basically uh, now the production is largely you know a, a larger uh, broader or a broader uh, perspective whereas the working of the environment is assigning the tasks to the employees and so on and so forth so telling the employees or the subordinates to do something this is basically what an administrative is uh, strategic is uh, deal with organizational growth um, generally deals with organizational yeah, it has to. Uh, operational is related to the production of the factory or the growth, and the administrative is welfare of the employees and taking care of the employees and uh, guiding the employees during what they are working. Right. So I hope now this is clear that what is the difference between the strategic, operational, and administrative uh, uh, strategies. Now, uh, key characteristics again, uh, it is basically what makes the decision uh, strategic. Uh, decisions making uh, in the face of uh, uncertainty, again, um, I've already discussed it, requires uh, commitments, uh, involves uh, allocation of sunk investment. Now, sunk investment is basically uh, an investment that you are making, which may have the potential risk of uh, getting and uh, not getting any benefit. but you may actually lose that money right you may lose that investment so that is a sunk investment so uh, any of the investments that you make uh, which do not bear any uh, or the profit or the revenue uh, that is a sunk investment uh, so if even if you actually lose the money uh, you should have the commitment to actually uh, keep on going right so uh, it's not the, it's not like that. If you if you fail once, uh, you actually give give up with that. Uh, if you fail, you learn that why you have failed, and then you do not commit the same mistake again, right? Uh, then it requires the choice and trade-offs, uh, multifunctional in the scope of the sequences, entrepreneurial theorizing, uh, future orientation, uh, infrequent and non-recurring. Uh, uh, 
it is basically strategic decision is non recurring uh, usually once you make a strategy you not you do not actually jump back to the uh, previous strategy right um, when it is not working you try finding out that because the previous strategy if it did not work and the next strategy if it, it did not work either you're not going to jump back to the previous one because the previous one didn't work either right so uh, what you're going to do is you're going to find out the the possible potential problems which were there in both the strategies and make this new strategy right dealing with the competition obviously it's a competitive market so uh, you have to actually make a strategy to compete in the market concerning the external environment and uh, primarily product uh, uh, market choices i hope it is pretty much clear that what the actual strategy means uh, and the strategic uh, this is how a strategic decision uh, cycle actually works uh, primarily uh, you identify the problem then you establish a decision criteria and then you weigh the decision criteria generate the alternatives uh, evaluate the alternatives uh, choose best alternative implement the decision and evaluate the decision now this whole uh, decision cycle what we are going to do is in the next lecture we are going to see that what are the different um, what we're going to see every step of it actually what we are going to do is we are going to actually implement analytical hierarchy process AHP, right? So uh, this AHP is going to actually tell you that uh, uh, when you identify the problem, it's going to actually uh, uh, establish the decision criteria, weigh the decision criteria, generate the alternatives, uh, evaluate the alternatives, best alternatives, and so on and so forth until they evaluate the decision. And it is a very interesting topic, right? So I hope that you're going to enjoy this AHP in the next session, right? So uh, then. Uh, there are the three phases of the strategizing. The first is the organizational uh, analysis. Then there's a strategy making, and there is a strategy management. Now, when we talk about the organizational analysis, organizational analysis generally contains uh, that what an organization is capable of doing at this point in time, right? Uh, so uh, you you should see that what you are capable of doing it. Do not step into anything which you are not capable of doing. Any of the organizations, they do their SWOT analysis, and this is exactly what they, what is coming ahead in these slides as well. They do the SWOT analysis, they do the PERT analysis, they do uh, different types of analysis, and what they generally see is that what they what their strengths are. So they want to actually gain those strengths into their uh, you know develop their strengths into their opportunity, and they want to actually see the potential gap in the market and develop the strengths accordingly as well right so if you don't have a potential uh, uh, potential if, if you don't have a, a potential strength which uh, the market gap is covering at the point of time and you need that strength then you must gain that strength as well so this means that is that it is your weakness at this point of time right so you have to turn that weakness into your strengths so that you can actually get the opportunity in that uh, market and cover that gap in the market and then turn that gap as a threat to your uh, competitor right so what you need to do is for example if uh, let's suppose if you have a certain type of uh, uh, of uh, um, a weakness right uh, now this weakness actually uh, you have to cover this weakness and you what you're going to and you have to actually uh, uh, identify the gap you have already have identified the gap and you have to cover that gap you have to take this strategy now what you what strategy management actually means is that you should keep on monitoring that whether the thing that you are trying to achieve whether are uh, you are going in the right direction or not if you're not going to actually manage the strategy and if you're not going to actually see that in which direction you are in the direction that you're going are uh, is absolutely okay and if you're okay with it uh, do you need any other requirement do you need any other resources to do it or maybe you might be deviating with anything uh, uh, with your main goal that you want to achieve so this is this is what a strategy management means you need to actually monitor and review remember that in risk analysis we actually on the right side 
of uh, the steps there was monitoring and review which was continuously going on so what you need to do is you need to continuously uh, monitor your strategy uh, whether you are in going in the direction that you had actually decided and uh, you need to actually analyze uh, again uh, in order to analyze uh, manage the strategy you need to analyze the organizational uh, resources and the organization internal resources and the internal environment and the external environment continuously to actually make uh, the, the strategy um, become successful. Now, uh, the attributes uh, of the strategy are the uh, definitions of the strategic analysis often differ, differ with, but the following attributes are commonly associated with them. Uh, identification and evaluation of data relevant to the strategy formulation. Definition of external and internal environment uh, to be analyzed. This is exactly what I said uh, earlier. Uh, a range of an analytical methods that uh, can be employed uh, in the analysis. Now, these analytical methods, if you actually look at these analytical methods, and this is exactly what I, uh, I will say, this is spot analysis this is your best analysis this is your quarter five forces analysis this is your four corner analysis this is your value chain analysis this is your early warning scans this is your war game so um, we are not going to look look at everything what we are going to do is we're going to quickly go through this spot analysis we're going to go through this best analysis then the um to five forces so i think that these three analysis what we are going to do in this uh, uh slide and we're just quickly going to see that how these analysis can actually help because these three analysis can also help identifying the risks uh, uh, risks uh, uh, in your uh, uh, in your wedge now when if you identify those we had already seen the uh, ishikawa diagram before uh, for identifying the problems but the SWOT analysis best analysis and quarter five forces they 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 are used to identify the potential risks and they are uh, used as an analytical method uh, to uh, develop a certain strategy uh, and take the decisions as well. Now, um, must answer ask questions expected uh, these are the basically applications of analytical tools uh, expected benefits defined and actionable uh, allowed time to collaboration i mean these kind of things these tools uh, whether it be your SWOT analysis best analysis quarter five forces uh, they are not individual exercises they are basically done in uh, the groups right so uh, it is it is always recommended that we should you know, we should keep on doing uh, these kind of analysis in the teams uh, where different departments uh, or the different uh, uh, functional departments they should actually sit together and or maybe the divisions they, they uh, it totally depends where you want to actually do this analysis uh, different departments they should actually sit together and do this analysis or within the department you can do this analysis as well now uh, the SWOT analysis is basically strengths, opportunities, weaknesses, threats, although we have actually discussed uh, the SWOT analysis before as well, but I'm repeating it again, right? Strengths, uh, what does your organization do better than others? Uh, we're just going to quickly go through it. I'm not going to explain it further, right? Because we have already discussed it plenty of times. Uh, what are your unique selling points? Uh, what do you competitors uh, and the customers and the market? I mean, these, these are the strengths, right? You can actually go through these strengths. You can pause the video and see what are different strengths, what are the different opportunities, like opportunities. Uh, what political, economical, social culture, and technological test changes are taking place and they might take place uh, that would be favorable for you, right? So uh, there are uh, there uh, currently gaps in the market and uh, or unfulfilled demands. Uh, what new innovations could your organization bring to the market, right? So this is basically the opportunities. Weaknesses again. Uh, what does your organizations do better than you, uh, right? Uh, other organizations do better than you. Um, what 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 uh, elements of the your business? Add little to or no value. Uh, what do competitors and uh, customers in the market perceive as the weaknesses? Right. Uh, then um, in the threats is basically political. Again, when you, you're going to do the best analysis to see whether you have, uh, you have any threat or not. Uh, what restraints do you uh, uh, restraints to you? Uh, your face uh, should be your face. Uh, what is your competition? 
doing uh, uh, what, uh, that could negatively impact you, right? Specifically speaking, um, the threats generally, again, uh, the, uh, the, your strengths can become your opportunities. Uh, your weaknesses can become your threats. It is as simple as that. So what you have to do is you have to cover these weaknesses and put them over here in your strengths, right? And you have to, uh, once you actually uh, uh, cover your weaknesses and minimize your weaknesses, uh, you may actually uh, minimize the threats as well, right? And those threats may actually become the opportunity later on. Once you, once obviously these weaknesses become your strengths, right? And you uh, cover the opportunity. So basically it's a continuous exercise that you keep on doing. Then there's a pest analysis because there is a pest analysis over here. Uh, we have actually seen the, uh, the pest and we have also seen the pest over here. So the pest analysis basically uh, is basically not the pest, it's pest plus EL. So if we actually put plus EL over here as well, because this is basically legal and environmental, right? So a pest actually uh, is an abbreviation of political, economical, social, and technological right uh, plus environmental and legal so what we need to actually see is the political factors uh, the government regulations trade restrictions uh, political stability i mean these are all the external environment of the organization right uh, this is all the uh, because it is all the uh, external environment um, uh, it's all political uh, government regulations, you, one should actually keep on actually uh, keep an eye on the government regulation, uh, trade restrictions, uh, and think about uh, that how can they actually benefit with these uh, regulations or the restrictions or maybe the political stability. Now, uh, there are some cases uh, uh, like um, in, in case of the telecommunication sector, uh, the most of the telecommunication, telecommunication sector, they actually uh, have uh, an extra taxation, but unfortunately that taxation, the customers have to pay, right? Uh, which actually becomes eventually a little bit of a burden for the telecommunication organization. Because the amount of the calls that, uh, if, if, uh, if the users get uh, the lesser amount of the taxation, and they'll be actually taking more calls and they'll be making more that are used. Uh, on the other hand, if the number of the taxations per minute or the per, per call increases, the number of the calls uh, will actually reduce, which would actually reduce the overall revenue of the telecommunication organization. Uh, and this would, this in return, uh, hit uh, economically uh, to the government, right? So uh, <clears throat> we also see the economic factors, which is the cost of capital purchasing. Uh, I don't need to tell you what a cost of capital is because you have. We spent a lot of time on this, uh, the cost of capital. Purchasing, power of organization, economic growth, interest rates, uh, inflation and currency exchange rates. All right, uh, social factors, they include the influence uh, of the consumer needs, potential market sizes, uh, include population growth, uh, age demographics, uh, health attitudes. Uh, then the technological factors, uh, if there is any of the technology that which, which, is, which is coming up, right? Um, Influence of the entry barriers, right? Uh, which is um, you are unable to penetrate into the market, right? Um, make buy decisions, investment uh, in innovations, uh, include automation, uh, invest uh, uh, invest in uh, incentives, uh, and so on and so forth. So basically, the technology factors. Uh, there are different technology factors, uh, not not a single factor. Uh, you might actually. Uh, Feel that you might might not be able to you know uh, enter the market. That is what what a market barrier is. Uh, you are unable to take the decisions. Uh, you might not get the right investment. Uh, you might not get the right technology to get it implemented within your product and then launch it. Whereas your plan is to do it specifically. Uh, when we talk about uh, uh, extremely technical products like you people have an EEG based wheelchair or maybe uh, uh maybe um uh, i just forgot the second one um ah that robotic vacuum cleaner right so you might actually you might actually face this entry barrier within because you have to actually uh, uh 
see the perception of the customers as well, right? So uh, the, it's not only the technological barriers for you, it's basically the technological te technical barrier for the customer to adopt that technical aspect uh, as well, right? So uh, I hope uh, that makes sense. So it's, it's, you might actually develop a very good technological artifact, uh, but the, eventually what good it is, uh, if it's, if the customer is not going to buy it, so it's it's basically the, the barrier that you have to break for the with the customer rather than you know uh, within yourself. So uh, then there's an environment which is again uh, other factors you have to actually go through this uh, and the legal factors that you have to go through, uh, right? So uh, now. Uh, again, you can, what you can do is you can actually do the SWOT analysis and see where the, your opportunity lies uh, within this uh, best analysis, right? Then there's a portal five forces. Uh, portal five forces are basically uh, threats of the new entrant, uh, then determinants of the supplier power, then threats of the substitute product, and then the de uh, determined a buyer power. Now, which is uh, okay, uh, so there is a rivalry among the existing firms. This is the fifth one, right? So these are the five forces, and uh, actually all the forces are actually uh, putting a force within the rivalry. So the threats of the new entrant is basically the barriers. Uh, we are just like the technological barriers, uh, these are the barriers, right? Uh, for example, economy of scale, um, uh, the amount of the people that you would be targeting and how much amount of the price you are going to keep of that product uh, for the, for those customers, right? Uh, product differentiation, um, we have discussed it a lot. Um, how much innovative your product is, capital requirements, uh, how much money is required to actually develop that inno innovative product, uh, switching cost of buyers, uh, how much, how much, uh, amount would it take for you to actually break the customers uh, from the your competitors and bring it to yourself, right? That is what a switching cost is. Um, uh, or how much how much cost will uh, will that buyer pay uh, to actually? Uh, it, it's basically a pricing strategy. How much uh, uh, cost a buyer will pay to actually leave its older brand and come with you, right? So uh, access to distribution channels, uh, other cost uh, advantages, uh, government policies. Now these are all the threats of the new entrants. So uh, amongst all these threats, uh, the, uh, uh, the new entrants may actually face either of them or maybe all of them, right? So uh, you have to be prepared for all of these uh, uh, threats. There is a determinant of uh, 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 determinants of uh, uh, supplier power, which is the supplier concentration. It's it's basically the supplier is basically the uh, it's, it's what they are doing is they are actually supplying you with the raw material, right? So uh, the input of the supplier is very important because the supplier actually gives you the potential market uh, identification as well as uh, the raw material or maybe uh, the Basic resources to actually pay, make that product as well, right? So uh, any of the uh, any of the uh, uh, inputs that you might be requiring from the suppliers, they actually can manipulate the market. They can manipulate this. They can, uh, because they have the power. They might actually uh, uh, gain because because they know the market very well. They may actually substitute. Uh, any of the raw material to you, which they are already giving it to the uh, uh, to the competitor. So if that is the so if you are if you are actually trying uh, if you are successful in molding the supplier, you can actually pretty much gain the market, right? Because you might be getting something very useful, right? So uh, supplier concentration, availability of the substitute inputs, importance of the supplier's input to the buyers, supplier's product differentiation. Uh, importance of industry to the suppliers, buyer switching cost to the input, suppliers threat to forward uh, integration, for, uh, suppliers threat to backward integration, right? So these are generally uh, uh, the threats uh, 
uh, for you uh, from the supplier perspective, right? Uh, from then, from the buyer's perspective, because this is the main market that you have. So uh, number of the buyers relative to, to the sellers, uh, the, um, if the amount of the sellers are higher than the uh, uh, buyers, then obviously uh, you're going to actually uh, uh, face a lot of competition. Uh, then how much differentiation do you do uh, within the product to actually, uh, which the other sellers are not uh, selling? Uh, switching the costs to use the other products. Uh, the amount of the uh, price that you are offering to your customers, whether other sellers are offering the same price or not, uh, your, if, if that is the case, your profit margins may vary because if you're going to sell something cheaper, your profit margin is going to come, uh, come low. So being, being a new startup, I believe that is a very good uh, value proposition for the customer. We've already discussed it, but uh, you have to keep this thing in mind that you have to actually remain with, uh, you know, on the threshold of the market price. If somebody is selling something for uh, ten grand uh, or maybe uh, ten thousand or fifteen thousand, right? So uh, it's, it's not like that. You're going to sell it for five hundred, right? So you you may actually sell it for like nine thousand. Uh, or maybe fourteen thousand, or maybe thirteen thousand. But you have to remain on this, uh, on this, uh, on the same um, uh, margin. But you may actually pr uh, give a price a little less, so that you can, so that the customer can actually uh, feel the value propos uh, uh, proposition. Right? So the customer can feel the value. Um, if you're going to actually offer it for like five hundred, and the other competitors are offering or, uh, uh, them for like ten thousand. Uh, and you're offering it for like five thousand, uh, assumingly, right? So uh, the competitor, uh, the competitor still has an edge. Why? Because anything that you're uh, offering for like five thousand, and there is a big margin gap of, uh, you know, five thousand, and the competitor is going to, uh, uh, selling it for like ten thousand. The customer's feelings and the perceptions towards your product is going to become negative. That the product probably might not be that reliable. That is the reason why you're selling it so cheap, right? Uh, so this is this is sort of a thing that generally happens when you actually uh, um, see uh, the pricing factor, right? The buyers, uh, then again, the buyer's use of multiple uh, sources, buyer's threat of backward integration, uh, seller's threat of forward integration, uh, and the importance of the, I mean, this backward integration and the forward integration is generally, um, Anything which which actually because we can also see the backward and the forward integration over here as well, right? Both of these parts are actually uh, uh, the uh, both of these things are actually the part of uh, this vertical uh, integration, right? Um, because let's assume there is an organization uh, you have a firm uh, and you actually <clears throat> need the supplies. So what you do is you actually own. Uh, one of the uh, uh, companies which actually is or may supply you the uh, uh, raw material, right? So if if you're buying that company to actually um, supply you that, uh, which can actually supply you with, with you, you with the uh, raw material, uh, this is basically your backward integration. So what you are doing is you are actually integrating your current company manufacturing company because you have a manufacturing company uh, your manufacturing company needs a supplier and what you have done is you have bought the supplier of you you have actually acquired the supplier right so if what you have done is you have actually integrated your manufacturing company backwards with the uh, company which is actually selling you the raw material right then for the forward integration you actually buy or you own uh, or you acquire the stores which may actually sell your product Right. So uh, this is basically your forward integration. So uh, I hope this is a little clear that a suppliers threat to you know uh, forward integration and the buyers uh, uh, threat to the backward integration and so on and so forth. Because this is this is basically why buyers threat to backward integration is because any of the manufacturing company they may actually face the difficulty with. Uh, buying the supplies from the supplier. If you actually buy the supplier, you may get the uh, 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 supplies consistently at the significant rate, uh, which which you can actually profit yourself, right? 
So uh, this is uh, I've already told that uh, told you that the suppliers may become an issue because they may actually offer you the raw material or they may offer you the supplies uh, at the different rates, right? So uh, which which may become an issue for you for the uh, when when you actually talk about uh, the uh, profitability, right? So uh, again, the thread two of the substitute products is the similar products which are already available. Um, in the market, uh, and uh, this when, when the uh, similar uh, uh, products are already available in the market, you, <clears throat> the customer will always be ready to switch from one product to another product, right? So uh, now all these forces, along with the rivalry among the existing firms, um, number of competitors. Uh, relative size of competitors, industry growth rate, uh, fixed cost versus variable cost, um, product differentiation, uh, capacity uh, augmentation. Basically, uh, it's basically about all about the competitors that uh, already uh, the competitors they may actually uh, maintain their rivalry on the different basis, right? They can they can actually challenge you within the market in different ways, right? Uh, they may actually. Uh, uh, of the different prices rates, they may actually have be uh, of a larger size than yours, right? They may be of uh, 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 they, they may have a bigger share in the market, uh, and so on and so forth. I mean, this is this is uh, uh, this is basically what a rivalry uh, amongst the existing firms means, right? So uh, when when we actually uh, have to compete uh, with the rest of the rival firms. We have to take care of all the possible forces, uh, which may actually lead us uh, to, you know, uh, to a certain competitive edge, right? So uh, we need to actually take care of the suppliers. We need to take, take care of uh, being a new entrant. What do we need to do? Uh, we need to actually see the buyer power, and we need to see the substitute product. Uh, and this is exactly what. Uh, uh, how can we actually compete with the rivalry firms? Right. So I hope the Porter's five forces is clear. And uh, how can we actually take advantage of these Porter five forces to potentially identify the risks, and then we can actually strategy. Uh, we can take the decisions strategically uh, and define that, uh, decide our strategy. That how do we have to actually compete in the market? Again, these uh, uh, Porter's five forces have four corners. Uh, one is basically uh, now this is the future strategy, competitors' future strategy. Uh, and we want to actually see uh, that what are the possible drivers and what are the possible assumptions. Now, this is this lift part over here is basically the motivation part, right? And this is the action part. Uh, the drivers of the motivation might be the financial goal, the corporate culture, organizational structure, leadership background, external constraints, and business philosophy. Right. Uh, whereas the management assumptions are the company's perceptions, uh, cultural traits, organizational values, perceived industry. Whereas the current strategy, uh, which actually are the actions, uh, are how to uh, uh, how the business uh, create how should one business create a value, uh, where the business is choosing to invest, uh, relationships, networks, and the business as developed. Uh, then capabilities are the basic skills which an organization has. So uh, the, this motivation and this action, uh, they actually enforce uh, uh, the a strategy, the development of the strategy, uh, which may actually compete with the uh, uh, you know uh, with the competitors, uh, and the strategy uh, for the future strategy uh, for the competition with the uh, with our competitors, obviously. So um, within this uh, value chain analysis, what is value chain analysis, we can actually see that this is the primary activities. Uh, these are the primary activities and these are the support activities. For example, the fi uh, administrative finance and infrastructure. These are similarly human resource management and the product development, uh, product and develop uh, technology development and the procurement. Now these, um, support activities and the basic uh, primary activities like inbound logistics, operations, uh, outbound logistics, sale marketing, and service. They all tend to actually generate a certain value at a less cost. Okay? That is basically the profit margin. So if we have, this 
the start actually means that if we have our support activities uh, and we actually polish our support activities and we actually keep our primary activities uh, at, at a very good level, then we can actually generate a substantial profit, right? So uh, in other words, um, if we actually take care of all the potential risks, right? And we generally have, tend to have uh, a, a strategy we can, uh, which we can actually maintain that strategy and keep on lookout for that strategy and keep on managing that strategy. Our support activities and the private activities, we, and we can actually generate uh, a, a, cer a certain amount of profit margin. So um, wargaming is generally uh, competitive, vulnerable, and misguided internal uh, these are basically simulation based. Uh, we are generally not going to discuss it because uh, this is really not part of the course. Uh, so, uh, uh, generically, uh, wargaming is basically the uh, simulation of the comparative scenarios uh, through which you can actually simulate that if you take a certain decision, what potential impact it might have uh, on the market, right? Uh, and uh, what potential benefit you are going to. So this is basically all simulation based. So, right. So um, this is one little example uh, of uh, a, a lemonade business. Uh, we go from a top to bottom with this. Uh, and the first one is, uh, but generally we see the this financial and the measures are the profit and the targets are uh, enough to buy uh, a bicycle by the end of the summer. So now this is the target. Uh, and initiative is uh, that, get a piggy bank uh, hide from the sibling, uh, right? <laughs> because uh, this is basically a little, little, little girl who actually wants to start a lemonade business, right? Uh, so what she does is that the customer uh, is uh, the repeat, for the customer, it's basically the repeat business. Uh, then it is, the target is 80% target of the uh, parents, right? Uh, then the initiatives is the second class half price uh, campaign. A campaign. Uh, this means that uh, if you buy one glass, you get a second glass, uh, a, a second glass half uh, at the half price, right? So uh, this is the sort of the initiative that uh, you have taken, uh, that a little girl has taken. Uh, then internal business process over here is basically the quality sugar, uh, quality of the sugar content, uh, image, which is very important, uh, index percentage of the drivers uh, that smile. Uh, then targets uh, are basically 100% sugar content exceeds that uh, of the soda, 80% of the spike, right? Uh, initiatives is ask mom to make uh, the lemonade, have a younger and the cutest siblings wave signed by the road. So uh, this is one of the marketing strategy that they actually have, right? Uh, organizing capacity is uh, skills. Percentage mom is angry due to wasted lemons. Culture uh, is average age of the lemonade stand works. Uh, then targets is 0% anger rate, less than six years old. Uh, and then ask uh, mom to squeeze lemons and partner with the younger cuter siblings. Now, if you actually look at this strategy, I mean, uh, whatever the mayors are, whatever the targets are, whatever the initiatives are, now the initiatives generally actually uh, targets is basically what you can see is the target uh, capacity. This is basically uh, uh, what you want to achieve, right? Uh, so at the financial level, what do you want to achieve? At the customer level, what do you want to achieve? At the internal business process level, what do you want to achieve? And at the organization level, what do you want to achieve? Then it's the measures. What measures are you taking in order to actually achieve that particular target? And then there's an initiative that you want to actually, initiatives that you want to actually uh, uh, take to actually uh, enhance uh, this target to be captured, right? Okay, so uh, for at the organization level, improve the lemon squeezing skills, right? And increase the youth work culture. These two are the, strategies uh, at the organizational level. At the internal business level, uh, improve the lemonade quality and improve the image uh, uh,
brand image. That is the internal business process. Then the customer. Now improve the customer satisfaction and at the financial, improve the profits. Now the point over here is that when you are trying to do something, you are actually trying to strategize something, you need to actually think at the organizational capacity level. You also have to think at the internal business process level and you also have to think at the customer level and financial level. So all the four levels must be considered while actually developing a strategy and while taking a decision that how eventually your organizational capacity is going to handle the internal business processes and those internal business processes can actually satisfy the customers and how customers can actually give you the money so that you can get some financial benefit so just go through this just look into this um, uh, this exercise a little bit and then just think for a while that what your uh, uh, motive would be for your own venture and for your own product, right? So uh, at the end, uh, the logic of the strategic planning is basically at the top is basically to the uh, customer stakeholder uh, needs, which is actually your mission, all right? Uh, then you develop a vision and then the strategic perspectives, then uh, uh, strategic needs and the results, strategic objectives, strategic map, uh, then the performance measurement target and the strategic initiatives, right? So uh, the definitions over here, uh, the mission is to what is our purpose, right? And these definitions are all given over here. Uh, keep one thing in mind that you need to have a very broader vision and the mission, both of you, right? So you need to have a very broad a mission and your vision. If you have a mission and a vision, you very broad, uh, then only then, what you can do is you can actually develop a certain strategy to actually uh, meet this vision over the period of time, right? So, uh, for the, this is it uh, for the timing uh, from uh, this uh, strategy and uh, decision making, uh, which is the combined part. So, uh, if you have any queries uh, in uh, in this session, uh, please do let me know. Uh, we're going to have uh, another session on Thursday uh, at the end. You can ask me the queries in that as well. Uh, so, till then, Allah Hafiz and bye bye.